Okay, let's take a look at this T-account analysis of cost flow problems. We're dealing with the Gainer company and we have the information in T-account form that you see on the screen. So, it looks like under raw materials, um, we started out with 50,000, we added debits of 350,000. They're not giving us the credits, but we had an ending balance of 40,000. And there's other information as well. Let's start working on this problem on a separate tab. But let's look at requirement one. To the left of my mouse, I'll read it. What was the cost of raw materials put into production during the year? All right, well, here's what we know. We know 50,000 was available at the beginning. There was debits of 350,000, and we ended at 40,000. 40, so to, uh, to work number one, let me do this. I'll just put a number one here. Um, what we'll do is we'll jot down what we know. We know the raw materials inventory at the beginning of the year was equal to $50,000, right? And let me format these uh, in a way that will make sense to us. Um, then we had debits, which were examples of purchases of materials. And... I believe, we'll go back, I think that was 350000 right? To the left of my mouse was 350000 then we ended with 40000 Okay, so what that tells us is if we add those two together, we can come up with the materials available for use. And the materials available for use, we just sum from above, is 400000 Then we had raw material inventory at the end. I'm going to copy from here. In the end of the year was 1231 was $40,000. And from that, we can then subtract out what was, what was available at the end of the year from the material that was available for use during the year to derive the materials requisitioned for production. And that had to be the 400000 less the 40000 or 360,000 and I'll bold that because that's the answer to part one. Let's take a look at number two. Um, I want to jot that this way. There we go. And number two asks us how much of the material in one above consisted of indirect materials? Alright, well what we know is 360 is what we start with and then if we look over here to um, debits to work in process, we see there was a debit of direct materials of 310,000. So if our raw materials consists of both direct and indirect materials, then the difference must have been the indirect. So let me go back here and show you. There's the 310 to the left of my mouth coming from direct materials. So we're going to say, what's the, diff what's the indirect materials? requisitioned, I'm going to abbreviate, abbreviate this for production, would have been equal to the 360,000 less the 310,000 that we identified as debits. So that net amount would have been 50,000. Now let's make sure that's what the question was. How much of the materials in one above consisted of indirect materials? And we've answered that one. It's $50,000. Okay, now let's tackle number three. And number three asks us, how much of the factory labor cost for the year consisted of indirect labor? All right, so let's write down what the total factory wages were accrued during the year. And where we, and let me sort of spread this so we've got enough room uh, to write that in here. And then I'll shrink this a little bit. Okay, total factory wages accrued during the year. We can get that by looking at the credits to the factory wages payable account. So that's our factory wages payable account. And the total credits represent the amount we're transferring to jobs, if you will, or to work in process is 520000 So we'll go over here and we'll jot down that 520000 and then we need to subtract out any direct labor costs. Okay. 
and if we look at the um, direct labor cost from work in process we see there was a debit of 500,000 okay so 500,000 was applied as direct labor so if I put in the 500,000 then if I subtract the 500 from the 520 we're able to determine what the indirect labor cost would be and it's twenty thousand dollars and that takes care of part three now let's take a look at number four alright all right, let me slide a little bit so we can see to the left of my mouse it says what was the cost of goods manufactured for the year and that one's relatively easy to find when we're done with work in process we have to transfer it to cost of goods sold the transfer process means we would reduce work in process and debit cost of goods sold. Okay, since right there above my mouse is the only credit, the million six must be the number we're looking for. So I will drop in here as cost of goods manufactured, and I'll abbreviate, is the million six. And that's the correct answer for number four. Now on number five, Let's see what we're going to be asked here. What was the cost? I'm reading to the left of my mouse now. What was the cost of goods sold for the year before considering underapplied or overapplied overhead? Okay, let's go back here. Um, what we need to do is sort of work a cost of goods sold schedule to come up with this. So let's start off with finished goods inventory at the beginning of the year and that number was uh, looks like a hundred thousand to the left of my mouse so I'll jot, I'll jot in the hundred thousand and then we need to add to that the cost of goods manufactured right and we get that from the work in process account we already calculated that so we'll just reference that cell it's the million six and then what we come up with is finished goods available for sale usually that can be called just goods available for sale and if I sum from above I get a million seven and then we subtract off the finished goods uh, in inventory at the end of the year so we'll jot down the end of the year amount and let's go find out what that number was oh it ended it to the left of my mouse at two hundred thousand so we jot in that and now I do my little subtraction where I take the million seven available less the two hundred thousand in ending and I come up with cost of goods sold and I believe that's what they asked for in number five what was cost of goods sold for the year so we've taken care of number five All right, let's take a look at number six Number six, six asks us, if overhead is applied to production on the basis of direct labor cost, what rate was in effect during the year? Okay, so let's figure out that overhead rate and how we would do that. Uh, we've got to figure out what was the manufacturing overhead uh, cost applied, and then we've, we're going to divide that by... Uh, let me draw a line under here to represent it's going to be divided by the direct labor cost. And then we'll jot in the numbers here and then compute the answer. So let me slide a little bit here. Okay, well the manufacturing um, overhead cost is that debit to work and process right there of 750000 So we know we've applied that to work in process because we're able to get that from the T account and then the direct labor amount has to comes from that 500,000 also applied to work in process okay so we jot in the 500,000 and then if we do the division we're able to come up with the predetermined if I can spell it right uh, overhead rate and I'm going to abbreviate that and that would be equal to, I mean, I'm going to do my little underline here, 750 divided by the 500,000, or a predetermined overhead rate of $1.50 per direct labor dollar, but 
typically that would be shown as a percentage, so 150% of direct labor dollars. Okay? And I'll put the it'll be I'll state this as percentage of direct labor cost. Okay? All right, let's take take let's tackle number 7 now. Number 7, let me slide here. Number 7 says what manufacturing overhead under applied or over applied or what was the manufacturing overhead and under applied or over applied and by how much we need to figure out was it under applied or over applied first okay well a number seven uh, let's let's put together a quick schedule so we can calculate that All right. so the actual overhead um, incurred or actual overhead cost for the year we look for debits to our overhead account and um, we've got 765 right above my mouse there so we jot, jot that in and then we need to do the amount that was applied and the amount that was applied um, we already calculated in number six above which also was that 750,000 to the left of the mouse, right? So the debit to the work in process is what was applied. Let me just reference that cell so I don't have to type it. And so the end result is we've got a difference which represents underapplied overhead. And it's underapplied because the actual overhead exceeded the amount that was applied to uh, inventory. So we'll, we'll do a little subtraction here and we calculate fifteen thousand oh, dollars by the way I haven't been bolding these let me go back and bold those to show that those are the answers and then finally we tackle number eight number eight asks us I slide down here compute and I'm just above my mouse here compute the ending balance in the work in process account the work in process inventory account assume that this balance consists entirely of goods started during the year if 20,000 of this balance is direct labor cost, how much of it is direct material cost and manufacturing overhead cost? Okay, so the ending balance is how much? Um, okay, well if we look at that work in process and you run a quick calculation on that, what you come up with is 100 plus 310 gets you to 410, right? Then you got another 1250 with the last two items, ones that appear here, right? So um, that gets me up to, uh, what is that in total? 100, 310, 500. I'll go real slow so that we get this right. 1660 less 160 of the credit gives us a 60,000 work in process balance. Okay, so let's write that down. Let's say the balance in WIP, I'm just abbreviating here at 1231, was equal to 60,000. Okay? Um, then we would have to subtract what was the du direct labor cost. And they gave that in the problem as saying that was $20,000. And then I believe they also said the manufacturing overhead cost. No, no. Then we have to compute the manufacturing overhead cost. Okay, and the trick here is that it is applied at 150% of direct labor. So we need to take the 220,000 times, uh, you could do it at 150%, right? You could just type that in, or you could type it as 1.5, since that's the same number. You come up with 30,000. Let me slide a little bit. And then that would compute how much of of the, the work in process is consist consisted of direct materials cost okay so that's the remainder and how we do that then is we take the 60,000 less the 20,000 less the 30,000 and we come up with 10,000 and that is the answer to number eight and that takes care of this problem everyone okay I just slid back up to the top to show you some of the earlier answers and I hope you found this beneficial thank you